anyone who's been faced with programming a synthesizer which has no presets has had to learn the basics of synth programming. Synth programming can be very complicated, but the basics are easy to understand. I'm making this video in response to a request from a new owner of a Behringer System 55. The System 55 documentation assumes the user already understands this foundational information. That's not always the case. If you do already understand these fundamentals, you may enjoy my System 55 Basic Patch Points video. See a link above. The video will start with a System 55 which has no patch points installed. From there we'll go into the basics of programming this powerful system. These fundamental principles of synth programming will apply to many other synthesizers. We'll start with the audio signal flow. From there, we'll work on the control signal flows, including connecting a MIDI keyboard. First, let's listen to the audio output from a few modules. We'll use a CP3AM mixer as the final stage of the audio path in the System 55. The CP3AM output will go to an external mixer and speakers. That's what you'll be listening to. The primary pitched sound source in the System 55 is the Voltage Controlled Oscillator, the VCO. Let's hear a few of the waveforms on a 921 VCO. We'll use the aux out from the 921 VCO so we can control both the source waveform and the level. That's a square wave. Let's listen to some of the other waves. Sawtooth, triangle, sine wave. Now let's hear some noise from the 903A random signal generator. This is white noise. and that's pink noise. Both the VCA and noise modules are classified as sound sources. The next classification we'll look at is sound modifiers. Before we add a sound modifier, let me introduce you to one other high-level concept, subtractive synthesis. The Moog System 55 uses the subtractive synthesis method of audio synthesis. The idea is to start with an audio source which is rich in harmonics, such as the square wave we first heard. We use a filter to subtract portions of the audio signal to produce a sound with less harmonic content. If you're liking this video, please hit like and subscribe. Let's insert a voltage control low pass filter, a VCF, into our audio signal path. First we'll move the VCO out to the VCF signal in. Next we'll patch the VCF signal out to the mixer in one. As we change the filter cutoff frequency we can hear the sound getting brighter or duller. We've just modified the sound source, the VCO, with a sound modifier, the filter. Note that we manipulated the controls of the filter manually. Later we'll use a control voltage to change the cutoff frequency electronically. We've been using the attenuator on the mixer to change the output volume. Let's control the volume with a voltage controlled amplifier, a VCA. First, we'll move the patch cable from the VCF signal out to the VCA signal out. Next, we'll patch the VCF signal out into the VCA signal in. We can use the fixed control voltage knob at the top of the VCA to change the volume manually. A 
Of course, it would be great to be able to turn the knob electronically. We'll cover that next. First, let's quickly recap what we've done so far from the subtractive synthesis perspective. We've listened to two different sound sources, the VCO and the noise. We've used two different sound modifier modules. We changed the harmonic content of our sound source with the VCF and the volume with the VCA. This completes the basic audio signal path. Let's switch gears to the control signal path. A voltage controlled synth module uses a control voltage to manipulate different parameters on a module. Many of these parameters have some sort of knob, slider, or switch for manual control of the parameter. Let's see an example of this. We'll use noise as our sound source. We want to use the 921 VCO as a low frequency oscillator, an LFO. So we'll switch the frequency range from audio to sub. Finally, let's start with a sawtooth waveform. We'll patch the 921 aux out to the VCA control in and listen to the effect. Next, let's control the VCF cutoff frequency with the LFO. Let's switch to a pitched sound on the 921B oscillator, the sawtooth output, and listen and we'll raise the resonance and slow down the LFO. And now we've got a nice sweep of the filter and you can hear the individual harmonics of the sawtooth oscillator. So that demonstrates the concept of voltage control to control a parameter such as filter or filter cutoff frequency. Another critical control module is the 911 envelope generator. It generates a voltage in response to a trigger or gate. Before we patch that module, we need to be able to control the synthesizer from a sequencer or a keyboard. In a voltage control system, a keyboard is typically used to control the pitch and initiate a note. We use the keyboard control voltage to control the pitch. We use a trigger or gate to begin and end a note. The Behringer System 55 does not come with a keyboard. The System 55 does include a CM1A MIDI to CV converter, which produces a keyboard control voltage and a trigger from a MIDI signal. MIDI keyboards are widely available and can be relatively inexpensive. Of course, you can also drive the CM1A from a computer via USB. I've connected a MIDI keyboard to the System 55 with this brown 5-pin DIN cable. The MIDI cable is connected to the CM1A MIDI input. To control the pitch of a VCO, we'll patch the CM1A CV output to the frequency control input on the 921B VCO. Let's open the VCA and listen to the change in pitch as we play the keyboard. That takes care of the pitch control. Now we're ready to use the 911 envelopes to control the articulation of the volume in this subtractive synth voice. By the way, 
both the CM1A and 911 envelope modules would be considered control generators. The second control signal we need from the CM1A is the trigger. We need to connect the first trigger output to the 911 envelope as trigger input with this green cable. Finally, we patch the 911 envelope output to the VCA control input. Now when I press a key on the MIDI keyboard, the trigger starts the 911 envelope. The envelope control voltage opens the VCA and we can hear the sound of the patch. I have an entire video on the 911 envelope ecosystem. See the link above. As we conclude this video on patching the System 55 for the absolute beginner, let me suggest a next step in your exploration of this amazing instrument. The Behringer System 55 Quick Start Guide is well worth reading. It's almost 100 pages, but the same information is presented in nine languages, so really each section is only about a dozen pages long. There's a link in the description to the PDF. If you go to page 12, you'll see a list of the modules in the system. After that, there's a section on getting started, and it includes patching examples. These examples can be very helpful as a follow-up to what you've learned in this video. So that concludes this video on patching the System 55 for the absolute beginner. If you liked the video, please hit like and subscribe. Thanks for watching.